uh, there's going to be a related rates question. Um, and so let's go over the different parts that we kind of need to, right? Uh, so first, we're going to read the questions, right? So we read it first, um, and we have tons of time. So take your time on these, yeah? Do it like Monday, read it Monday, and then reread it on Tuesday, do the problem, and then um, try it again Wednesday to make sure you're doing it right. Like try these problems multiple times just to double check you're getting the same answer. If you get a different answer each time, then you know there's a problem somewhere and figure it out. That's actually one of the reasons we did the quiz on um, on Monday the way we did it. Um, I'm trying to teach how to uh, be able to see when you make a mistake. It's not just oh, uh, find these errors, I want you to be able to do this with your own work. Um, and as a lot of people saw, it's hard to find where these errors are when you don't really know what's happening. Um, and so you need to start watching yourself and being able to understand what am I doing at each step? Am I clear? Am I understandable for the person who's grading it? Uh, because the people who are grading it are kind of like you um, in that they're, they're looking um, it's a little harder for them to see. Um, uh, so they have to make assumptions sometimes. And sometimes those assumptions are wrong. This is why I keep saying try to be clear, try to write everything. The more information you give in a clear, concise manner, the better for you. Um, so let's get back to this problem, related rates. So let's read it. A person is walking along the straight path at a speed of four feet per second um, in the middle of the night. In order to help them see, their friend points a flashlight on them from across the 20 foot wide street. At what rate is the flashlight rotating when the person is 15 feet away from the nearest point to their friend? Uh, so let's look at um, the key points here. So number one, remember, we're highlighting. So let's highlight some parts. So we have a straight path. That's one thing that kind of helps. We know that the speed is four feet per second. Um, we know that the flashlight is across the 20 foot wide street. Um, we know we want to see that the flashlight is rotating um, and it's 15 feet away from the nearest point. So let's draw this, yeah? So number two is draw. Um, and if you want, you can put those numbers that we had been talking about, that we had been using. It's not required. Um, it just helps organize kind of what's happening, yeah? Uh, so two, we're going to draw a line. So we know... We have a straight line for the straight path. And we know that you're a human and you're walking on it. Da, 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 da. And we're going to say you're walking this way. Yeah. Um, we also know that your friend is flashing a flashlight. So you're here. Here's your friend. Um, and I have things. So I'm actually going to do bam, bam. We have a flashlight pointing at you. That's actually pretty cool. Um, what else do we know? We know that the 15 feet away from the nearest point is going to be here, right? This is going to give us some 90 degree angle. And this is where you're at. Um, so this is kind of what we're seeing, right? So you're at some street. Um, this is the nearest point. So here's where you, we're using nearest. Um, so let me keep track of what I've used. So I've used nearest. I've used fit straight path. Um, so part three. For this, remember that we need to add notation. Um, so I'm going to add notation directly on here. Um, and so what I'm going to say is this is x, this is y, um, and then this is my theta for my angle, right? I'm asking about what at what rate is the flashlight rotating, uh, right? So I'm trying to see what the angle is. What's the rate of angle, the change of angle? That's the rotation uh, change. Um, and then the speed of movement is the x. Uh, yeah, so this is part three as well. So three on diagram. Um, you can write these out too. So what I, um, if you don't want to write on diagram, you can say x uh, is person walking. Theta is angle, etc. So you can actually add words if you'd prefer words. Um, so let's make a relationship between these three, these things. So we have three variables, right? X, Y, and theta. Um, I don't really care about this one right now uh, because we haven't really mentioned anything yet. So we'll just leave it alone for now. Um, so we have X, Y, and theta. 
And here you're going to have to think, how can I relate to x, y, and theta? If you think for a little bit, <sighs> sorry, um, still a little sleepy. Uh, so if you think about this for a little bit, uh, and you notice that we have a right angle triangle. So what you're probably going to want to do is use one of the right angle rules. Um, and those are, if you remember, Sokotoa, right? Uh, so which one is where the angle is opposite over adjacent? That's Toa. So we know that the tangent of theta is equal to x over y. Okay, so that's four. Uh, part five is we're going to want to take the derivative of everything. Now, here's the thing. We know that y is 15, right? So we know y is a constant. x is changing because this is this person is changing, and theta is changing, right? Because the flashlight is rotating. So this is going this way. x is going that way. But y is staying the same. The flashlight isn't really moving from its position. So y is a constant. So let's take the derivative when it, in respect to t, because everything is happening over time, right? So here we have dt d d t of tan of theta, um, and then we'll take d d t, uh, no, we'll just do it, yeah. So this is equal to d d t of x over y. So here on the left, tan of theta, the derivative is secant squared theta, and then I need to take the derivative of the inside, right? So that is just d d theta over time. Remember, the angle is changing over time, so it's a function of time, so I need this. On the right, um, y is a constant, so I can bring it out. And then I'm left with d dx d dt. OK, so that's 5. That's easy. Um, 6, remember, we're plugging in numbers. Um, we're trying to solve, um, actually, we're trying to solve d theta. So maybe I'll put these all into one big thing. So we have is equal to 1 over y secant squared theta d theta. Uh, oops, that should have a thing. And this is the x dt. And then secant squared, actually, if you remember, secant is 1 over cosine. So I can actually bring this up and make this cosine theta squared over y dx over dt. So here, let's see if we can plug things in. So I don't know what d theta dt is. Um, y, I know what y is, right? We said it's 15. Um, I know dx dt. This is 4 feet per second. So this is times four. Um, and so what do we have so far? We know this is done. Um, oh, I'm an idiot. This is not 15, this is 20. Uh, this is a 20 feet wide street. So this is 20, uh, which means this number is the only one that's wrong. Uh, 20. Um, and so we use this, this, this. What's left is this little part here, right? I haven't used that. We're 15 feet away um, from the nearest point. So what does that mean? 15 feet away from the nearest point. Here's the nearest point. So we're 15 feet away. So this here is 15. Um, and so basically, what we're, so the only thing that's left for us to figure out is cosine theta. So using Sokotoa, cosine Theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent we know is 20. And hypotenuse in this case, we already know 15 and 20, right? So this is 20 squared plus 15 squared. So we can actually, so let's, what is this? This is 20 over um, 400 plus 15 squared is 225. So we get 20 over 625 which is just 25. So this we get 4 over 5. All right? 4 over 5. So we can plug this into our cosine squared here. So we end up getting 4 over 5 squared. So part 7 is actually solve. So what do we get? d theta over dt. So we get 4 squared over 5 squared. I have another 20 on the bottom, and then I have another 4 on top. This 20 and one of these 4s will cancel, so we get a 5 here. So I get 4 squared over 
5 cubed. So this is 16 over 125. And I need to add my, um, my units. And I get 16 over 25 radians per second. Radians because this is what our angle is being measured over, right? This is not, we're not using degrees, we're using radians. Um, and so this is kind of how you're going to solve these. Um, note that I find that the related rates questions that I ask you um, on the exam are probably a little bit harder. Um, and since there's multiple versions, each one is going to be slightly different than the other one. Um, so I'm going to, once everyone has done the exam, I'm going to make sure that they all are weighted the same. So for example, if one of them turns out to be harder than I thought and the other one's easier, then I'm going to make sure that they're all weighted equal. So the highest grade on the hard one would be the same as the highest grade on the lower one, if that makes sense. Basically, I'm gonna make it fair to everyone. So don't worry if one of them seems harder than another one, I will grade this fairly. Um, so everyone has the same opportunity. Um, okay, so if there's questions, feel free to ask uh, and we will move on to the next question. Five, uh, linear approximation. Um, so originally I didn't want to do a question like this on the exam, but since it's take home and you have access to your notes and we're going to do one right now, um, I feel like this is okay. Um, and so this actually should be a fairly nice breather problem for you. Um, it shouldn't be too, too hard. It's just remembering the definition, um, and then just being able to use it. Um, and so let's remember the definition of the linear approximation. So the linear approximation of x at a point a is just f of a plus the derivative of f at a times x minus a. And so what are we asking? We're asking to find a good approximation for f of x um, is equal to x to the one third at x is equal to 1001. Okay, so we want to find a good approximation. So what number around 1001 makes x to the one third easy to solve, right? So x to the one third, one third is just the cube root of x. So basically a nice number would be some number where we have something to something cubed. Something cubed is a good number. 1000, right? When we have 1001, 1000 is just 10 cubed, right? It's 10 times 10 times 10. So 1000 is going to be a good number. It's going to be up to you guys to figure out what is a good number to approximate um, to. And this is kind of where the quote unquote harder part for this is figuring out what is a good number. Um, we also need to calculate f of a um, or f prime, sorry. So what's f prime of x? This is just the derivative. So this is one third x to the minus two thirds. Alternatively, to make life look like our f of x, I'm going to rewrite this as one third of the cube root of x squared. These are just the same thing, right? Because this is just x to the two thirds, which is x to the one third squared, right? Um, so we have this. So now let's actually plug in 1000. So here we have um, f of 1000 plus f prime of 1000 times x minus 1000. So what do we have? We have 1000 to the 1 third plus 1 over 3 1000 to the 1 third squared times x minus 1,000. 1,000 cube rooted is just 10, right? Because 10 cubed is equal to 1,000. So this is 10 over 1, 3 times. We already solved 1,000 to the 1 third, right? This is just 10 squared x minus 1,000. And so we get 10 plus 1 over 3 times 100 x minus 1,000. Um, so this is equal to, I'm going to make like denominators. So we have 3,000 
over 300 plus x minus 1,000. So here I did 300 over 300. So what do we have? This is equal to um, x plus 2,000 over 300. Um, okay, so the question was asking, find a good approximation for this at x is 1,001. So let's now find the approximation. So L of 1,001 at 1,000 is just 1,001 plus 2,000 over 300. That's it. So we just plug this into our calculator, 3,001 over 300. Um, and let me bring up my calculator quickly. Uh, I should have done this before. Uh, 3,000, 3,001 divided by 300. We get about 10.00333. Yeah, so this is a good approximation for our number. Um, yeah, and so this is how you do this problem. Next question. And final question um, is graphing. Um, and so you're, you are expected to do one graph as well. Um, and here I'm basically telling you what you need to be showing me this whole time. I know in class we did everything a little bit more ambiguously. And so here I'm being much more specific. You need to tell me when the function crosses the x-axis. You need to tell me what are the critical points. Um, you need to tell me what are the inflection points. Um, you need to tell me when is the graph decreasing, increasing and where is it decreasing? Where is it concave up and where is it concave down? Um, I need you to show me all of these things. Um, And so, what? Oh, okay. Um, and so let's look at um, the first part. Where does it cross? Where? So what we're going to do um, is we'll make a little graph here. And we'll fill this in as we kind of go along. So first question is, where does the function cross the x-axis? Basically, I'm asking, when is this? when is f of x equal to zero, right? So here we have x cubed minus one is equal to zero, or x cubed is equal to one. Well, this is only when x is equal to one, right? Um, I can't have any other number. Um, you can use rules theorem if you want to show that there's no other number. Um, no, I'm like, you're not forced to. Uh, but it would be a good way for you to verify, right? Um, and so here we have this. Um, and so I know that we have a point at one. So let me put a number one. And I know I cross here. So I know I'm going to hit there. So that's part one. Number two, what are the critical points and what are the inflection points? So remember for this, I need to look at the derivatives. So the derivative f prime of x um, is equal to, what do we have? x cubed minus 1. So we have 3x squared, and the minus 1 goes away. And the second derivative of x is just 6x. So we have a critical point when? So critical point is when you have, um, you. it's not differentiable, um, or when the derivative is equal to 0, right? Crit points at f prime of x is equal to one, 0. This implies 3x squared is equal to 0, or x squared is equal to 0. Therefore, x is 0. We also inflection points. Let's look at these. Inflection points at, uh, so we'll have this at double prime is 0. So a lot of people think that when we're looking at double prime, this is, gives us also a critical point. That is not true. Double prime only gives us inflection points. So here we have 6x is equal to 0. 
So we have x is equal to zero. So here we have, so we have a critical point at um, x equals zero, um, inflection point at x equals zero. So let's actually plug this in to our graph and see what happens. So f of zero here is zero cubed minus one is just minus one. So I know I have a point minus one here. Okay, so part three and four is when is a graph increasing and when is it decreasing? Uh, decreasing, um, And then when is it concave up and down? Um, so here, um, I think most people liked when we had the intervals on top. Um, so we're gonna do that instead. So let's put the intervals on top. Here it's easy because we only have one critical point, right? Um, so we're gonna look at whenever x is less than zero and whenever x is greater than zero. Um, and so here, um, here, I guess technically I'm just gonna put F prime, F double prime. Um, but remember a lot of times what we have is we'll do like X minus two or X minus three or something like that um, here in order to see what's happening everywhere. And then we multiply the signs together. Um, we went over this a few times in class, so I'm not gonna go over it too much. Um, but this is kind of, I'm more showing of how to do the problems, yeah? So here, um, f prime, when is it? So when is our function less than zero? Uh, so let's look at this. Um, we have uh, 3x squared minus one, right? Um, and so when x is less than zero, so we have, sorry, so we have x cubed minus one. So when x is less than zero, we have a minus and a minus. Um, and so in both of these cases, we have minus. If x is greater than zero, um, what do we have? Uh, what did I? That's okay. Yeah, so when x is greater than zero, um, what do we have? Uh, and we're looking at, I guess, yeah. Um, so remember this is x squared, and this is uh, 3x squared, and this is 6x, right? So here when x is less than zero, sorry, this is wrong, rewind. I wish I can rewind here, but I can't. Oh, well, um, so this was wrong, sorry. So we have f prime is equal to x squared, right? Um, and so here we actually have that x, when x is less than zero, this is positive. Um, and when x is less than zero for f double prime, we get this is negative, right? Since this is always x squared, we're always gonna have a positive number. So a positive will give us positive. Um, and then when x is positive here, we'll get a positive number as well. So what do we have? We have um, slope. Uh, so when x is less than zero, we have the slope increasing, but we have concave down. Um, and then when x is greater than zero, again, we have slope increasing, but we have concave up. So if we look at what our graphs are here, kind of, we'll have that this gives us this part, right? Where we're increasing in concave down. And then here we have this part where we're increasing in concave up. So putting this together here, we'll have this, right? So this is grabbing from this first part um, is here. And the second part goes here. And we're gonna follow this shape, right? So here, but I wanna still intersect my points. So I'm gonna draw the same shape, except I'm going to intersect my points. Um, and then I just wanna make sure here that it's flat because my derivative has to be zero. Um, and that should be the graph that you have for this uh, function. Um, I think that's all. Um, this, Like I said, this lecture has been longer than normal. Um, I will break it up into parts um, and send it to you. Um, good luck on the midterm. Good luck on the exam. Have a fun weekend. Um, do something fun at home. Um, try to like do things for yourself. Um, if you need anything, I am here. 
Um, I'm obviously not perfect at doing everything, um, but I'm trying my hardest to make life easier for you all. Um, if there's any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'm here for you all. Um, have a phenomenal weekend, and I'll see you for week two of Quarantine Madness. Bye.